everyone. Yesterday I was watching a video uh, by Dr. Len Horowitz and at the beginning of the video he mentions that 13% of Alzheimer's patients actually suffer from mad cow disease. And uh, my reaction was like, what? You know, I've never heard this before. Um, that sounds kind of outrageous. You know, remember a, a few years ago people were really concerned about, ma about mad cow disease. And then the concern kind of just died down and you never really hear about it. And I have wondered, well, you know, whatever happened to this? Um, are people infected or, you know, is there a risk or not? And we just kind of forgot about it. Anyway, I looked into what he was saying and I was quite shocked at what I found. Um, I found a, a page full of uh, references to scientific articles that seem to find a connection between Alzheimer's or atypical dementias also and um, mad cow. So one study, which I found on, um, on PubMed, suggested links between different types of dementias, Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, which is the human form of mad cow. Although there are different kinds. There's familial, which is like inherited. And, um, and then there's variant, which they say, well, they don't really know where they got it from. And some people think that people who come down with variant uh, CJD got it from eating these meat-like products that were served in school cafeterias and all kinds of places that were made from sort of rejected tissues of, you know, cow that wouldn't normally go into, it wouldn't go into the supermarket and included things like, you know, spinal matter and fluid and nerve tissue and brain and all kinds of stuff. So, suggested links between different types of dementias, Creutzfeldt, Jakob disease, Alzheimer disease, and retroviral CNS infections. And in the, on the page where they summarize all these things, they had a quote from that article which says, in our own neuropathological material, in 46 cases diagnosed clinically as AD, Alzheimer's disease, six cases were proven to be CJD, which is like the human form of mad cow, at autopsy, which they say is 15%. You can't really talk statistics when you're working with a sample of 46 people. Because, you know, there could be coincidence. It, it could be that actually, uh, maybe the people in that study, maybe they came from a certain area and there was more exposure to mad cow. Or uh, so maybe, uh, you know, it's, it's un, it would be higher than the average nationwide, or maybe it's actually lower. You, you really just can't tell. You'd have to look at a bigger sample. And there's more here misdiagnosed atypical dementias uh, here it says we screen 101 individuals with atypical dementias for uh, the known PRP gene mutations and it says uh, insertions were found in five individuals and and here is another one this one says uh, Alzheimer's and CJD and what they say here true prevalence of prion disease in this or any other country remains a mystery CJD is not a reportable disease so they really don't know actually how many people have it um, and so they, and they certainly don't know how many people who have Alzheimer's or atypical dementias um, actually have CJD. So it's, it's really, you know, mysterious. Compounding the uncertainty, autopsies are rarely performed on atypical dementias, according to Harrison 1991, because medical professionals fear infection. So they don't even want to go in there because it, those prions are like impossible to kill. So I can understand they wouldn't even want to get near them. And, and this going off on a little bit of a tangent, this is, uh, I'll raise the issue again of, uh, you know, maybe people being able to catch this from dental treatments, although I'm not trying to freak you out, but, you know, hypothetically, since these prions are impossible to kill, if you reuse something like dental equipment or, or anything else that, that, you know, you could uh, theoretically infect one person with prions from another. The officially reported rate in this country is less than one case per million people per year of CJD. An informal survey of neuropathologists, however, registered a theoretical range of 2 to 12 percent of all dementias is actually CJD. And hundreds of thousands of Americans suffer from severe dementias every year. Two other studies average about 3 percent CJD rate among dementia patients. So that would mean that a lot more people have um, CJD than, than originally thought. And, uh, and, and also it's showing up in Alzheimer's patients. And as Dr. Horowitz pointed out, there's like 4 million Alzheimer's patients per year. That seems like a lot. And if, you know, maybe a percentage of them, a good percentage of them have, it could be like 450,000 Americans having uh, so-called Alzheimer's. 
uh, right now because of um, mad cow disease. How crazy is that? You know, I, I think that there's really something to this, and I think this is one of those cases where the government really doesn't want people to know that there really is a risk of getting mad cow from eating meat. And I had also read, actually, um, speaking of risk, that people who ate uh, four or more servings of meat per week on an ongoing basis had, I think it was five times the risk of Alzheimer's disease as uh, vegetarians. So maybe it's not really Alzheimer's they're getting, maybe it's mad cow. And as I was saying, I think that this is something the government would want to co cover up because you can imagine the kind of hit the meat industry would take if this got out. Um, I'm not saying that all Alzheimer's is caused by, uh, you know, mad cow. Just to make it clear, I mean, they mentioned it could be somewhere from 2 to 12 percent or maybe 13 percent, something like that. And in this, uh, on this page here with all these links, they did talk about uh, the genetic link and there, there is a genetic factor to Alzheimer's that they've identified. And then there are these, um, these genes. I'm looking for the part here. Oh, okay, here it is. Um, there are three uh, types of APOE genes, E2, E3, and E4, and they say 20 20% of people with Alzheimer's have two E4s and 60% of people with Alzheimer's have E3, E4 combination because you get one from the mother, one from the father, so you have like a set of two. So that accounts for about 80% that there's a genetic link. Um, and there, there's an, okay, there's, there's a genetic link. So the remaining 20% may be a, a good part of those. Maybe it's from... Um, CJD, and then here's another article, a transmissible Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease-like agent is prevalent in the human population. And what they did was they took, um, what they said, um, we attempted to transmit CJD from Buffy Coat samples of 30 healthy volunteers, their age ranges were 20 years old to 71, uh, who had no family history of dementing illness. Uh, primary transmissions from 26 of 30 individuals produced CJD light spongy form changes in the brains of recipient hamsters at 200 to 5 days post, post inoculation. So they say we suggest that a CJD agent endemically infects humans but only infrequently produces an infectious dementia, meaning that a lot of people are infected and carry it around but that they rarely get sick. But if you would consider um, that you know a good percentage of Alzheimer's and atypical dementia patients test positive for it then maybe it's not that rare after all and maybe people are I mean they had 20 to 30 year olds and 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 people in these different age groups most people who get Alzheimer's are old so maybe you get infected with this you carry it around in your brain you know for decades um, and then eventually you come down with mad cow anyway I just wanted to raise the issue not trying to freak you out But I think that if you're gonna eat beef you should get it from a good clean reliable source You know not some industrial meat producer What do you call it agribusiness where God knows what they feed their animals? I, I'm not gonna be eating the meat from the grocery store. Well, I never do anyway, but pretty much but uh, especially not after learning this so just wanted to give you a heads up and uh, thanks for listening to me and I'll see you next time.